the same weather here as it is in Manitoba. Now the Lord really uh, blessed us with the weather, but it's not the weather that uh, we enjoy so much as fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Let's just stand at this time. Any prayer requests as we would go to the Lord? Unspoken. Your brother, yes. And your sister. Let's all lift up our voice together. Heavenly Father, as we come before thy throne of grace, we thank you, Lord, that we can approach thee through thy precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as you've seen the request, Lord, that has gone before thee, Lord. Lord, you knew them even before we asked. And I just pray, Lord, that you'd move upon these requests, not just in this assembly, Lord, but wherever thy saints may be on thy footstool. Bless thy little nation, Israel, Lord, in the time of her need now. Lord, I just pray that you'd have your way in this service and have your way, I pray, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You be seated. I'm going to ask the song leader to come lead us in song service. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody. Dale and Max, good to have you back. Brother York, Sister York, good to see you back. When somebody's missing, you feel it, and uh, it's good to see everybody here this morning. Just so thankful this morning for all that he does. When I look around and see all the good things He's done for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all For His blessings He freely gives I owe my life to him I've read so much to thank him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for. You see, he has been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. At times along this way I kneel. To stop and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. One, one day, I reach sweet heaven's shores. Oh, please, let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. He has been so good to me. And when I think of what He's done and where, He's brought me from I've got so much to thank Him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise.
praise Him for, you see He has been so good to me And when I think of what He's done And where He's brought me from I've got so much Thank Him for so much To praise Him for, you see He has been so good to me And when I think Of what He's done And where He's brought me from I'm but so much to thank Him for. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I really praise the Lord for it because it was really needed. So we thank Him very much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just watching the news makes you so thankful to know uh, what you know and what's taking place in the world. Like, uh, it's just amazing what's taking place. It's, and I'm thankful that I know him. And we're anchored in him. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Makes no difference what they say. I'm going down on my knees and pray. And I pray, pray, pray till Jesus comes. Rock my sword, my shield. He's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star Makes no difference what they say I'm going down on my knees and pray And I'll pray, pray, pray till Jesus comes He's the lily of the valley Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know. Across the bridge There's no more sorrow Across the bridge There's no more pain The sun will 
song upon your heart. Know what number that is? Jean? Anybody find it? 203? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm looking in the wrong book. Concentrate on him and 
Lift up holy hands, magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands. Across the page, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. And I wake up in the morning till I lay my
message that I heard that God would forgive my sins because Jesus Christ paid the price for me. And when I came to him and began to seek him, and when he touched me and changed me and forgave my sins, that outshines everything else. Amen. Uh, the parable says at that time, the kingdom of God is likened unto a man that found treasure hid in a field. And he went and he sold all that he had. Everything had to go and he had to have that treasure. Yeah. We're surrounded by religion. And I don't want to criticize. But I wonder if those people have really got a treasure in their heart. The song we just sang, He's the Lily of the Valley. He's in the dark valley. That lily will shine in front of us and lead us. Amen. And I appreciate God who would ever speak to me and call me under such a glorious gospel. On Tuesday, I was rushing around and I wanted to make a little trip and I was taking the truck down to my wife and I was going to get the car and get on my way. And I'm driving up to a green light and there's a car in front of me. The car slowed down and stopped right in front of me. And I'm rushing. You know what happened? My thumb come on the horn. <laughs> I was smitten in my heart. Why do I do those things? Why do I let the flesh rule? That's not the Spirit of God. That's <coughs> not peace. That's not patience. That's not a lot of things. That's something I had to cry out to God and repent about. And that's something I hope never do anything like that again. God's grace is sufficient for me. I don't need to act that way. I don't need to be that kind of a person. I don't want to be the flesh. Like Paul said in Romans 7, it's no longer I but sin in me that's doing it. I don't want that. That's not God's, that's not the image of Jesus Christ that I want to attain to. And the other thing I want to say is I fought a great battle this week. And you're fighting this battle. Something else, not, not what I just commented on. And the enemy comes. He says, how can you expect to get an answer to prayer? You're not going to get that answer. Why, you thinking that God forgive your sins? You're not. That's just your imagination. You're not going to get that. That's the battle, one of the battles that I was fighting this week. And I can stand here this morning and I can tell you that mountain way ahead of me is Jesus Christ and it's shining and it's bringing me through and he didn't touch me. Praise the Lord.
prayer. Is that a prophet that came? And they said, oh, you don't have to lay like that. And I said, please, put me back to bed. Yeah. And so they lifted me up, laid me in the bed. When I touched that bed, I felt a little better, and I knew that God had answered prayer. Amen. I still didn't know just what he was going to do, but he's left me here for a while longer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And he, every day, he has given me a little extra strength, little extra strength. I do. I'm taking over some of bus work. <laughs> he's looked after me all this time and been so good to me. And, and the doctor asked him when he was in the hospital, he said, Clarence, he said, do you think you can handle Audrey and the things that have to be done when we get home? And Bud said, yes, I can. And he did it, but it's been a hard job for him. He's never had to do it before. Yeah. But uh, the Lord has blessed me, has strengthened me, and that is why. I praise the Lord today because the prayers of God's people, they are blessed people, and I thank the Lord for everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be here. Praise the Lord. And I, too, want to thank all you people. You're so, so beautiful, so concerned about us, and not only us, but all the children of God. We are one great family. And we did go through a time of a valley experience. We really did. It, uh, even to the place where the devil said, do you, do you really believe there's a God? Where, where is your God? And I don't know, if I hadn't had uh, an experience yep. when the Lord saved me, yep. I don't know what a, kind of a condition I would really be in, but I went back to that, and I said, yes. yes. I know there's a God. And uh, the devil said to me, you've been, you've been boasting for a long time about your God. Now where is he? I kept praising the Lord. Yes. And eventually, that, that terrible feeling and spirit left and, and I'm glad for the victory today I'm glad that I, glad that I know him yes. whom to know right is life eternal yes. and I just love him today and I love you people I want to try and sing I don't know if you can or not see <coughs> When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and well among.
face the rage exceeds the anchor hold in spite of the storm it's the anchor hold though the ship is battered The anchor hold, though the sails are torn, I have fallen down on my knees as I face the raging seas. In spite of the storm. in a number, Paul. Yes, praise the Lord. One forty three, Brenda. 
gone in this evil age has blinded the minds today of people who walk their own according to God's own. In that thing is done, of sending his only son, accepting. pleasures I've known tell me Lord what did I ever do that was worth loving you and the kindness you've shown I've needed you so. Help me, Jesus. 
Jesus, my soul is in your hand. Well, tell me, Lord, if you think there's a way I can try to repay all I'm taking from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been to myself on my way back to you. in evening time this is the time that we are in that evening Heavenly Father as we come before thy throne I thank you Lord for a place that we yet assemble looking on to thee which cometh our help Lord as we look into your word this morning I just pray Lord you'd have your way in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray Amen and Amen you can be seated this morning And last night was ministering with the brothers and sisters from Australia, and uh, it's funny, in Micah chapter 7, verse 10, Israel is going through the same things we're going spiritually. They were taught, they've been taught in Israel, where's your God? Well, one of the things when he starts moving on the miraculous scene, we don't control him, he controls us. And I'm sure the Lord will deliver whatever he needs of, because remember, it's not our will, it's his will. Amen. Things sometimes can bring into assemblies, sickness and diseases and such like. Uh, sometime there's a scripture that says there can be sin in the camp. And that has seen in the Old Testament as the nation of Israel was coming out of the promised land, going towards the, out of Egypt, going towards the promised land. If there is, it could be a multitude of things that God knows why he moves at certain times. I know it would be nice to live way back in the 50s when that, the miraculous move was moving, the Spirit of God was 
on fire. See, anyone that would put up a tent, God would be blessing, healing, and so forth. But we're living at the evening time, which is another hour. And God's main concentration at this hour, he wants to get a bride ready. And to be ready, it doesn't just mean the inner man. We have to put on the dress of revelation as well. I just want to say we had some wonderful service in Manitoba. I still remember that Saturday night. I was there. I felt the Spirit of God even before going to the pulpit. And Sister Marie gave a tongues and interpretation. She said it was the strongest tongues in anointing that she ever had in her life. And that God was confirming the message that we're preaching in this hour is the right message. So praise the Lord. So God knows when, how, and what he's doing. In this morning, I'm still looking at in Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. There's things there. For a long time, as we read Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, it talks about a, there's going to be a half hour silence. Maybe I don't have it right here, but it doesn't matter. In that half hour silence, Before we get into it, we looked at a message concerning the watches of the night. And by revelation, we understand of a surety that we're living in the last watch at the hour that we're living in right now. It is the greatest hour. as far as God has opened up truth to you and I, but it is also the hardest hour which Satan is fighting against the church. And when we had looked at concerning in, in Mark, the 13th chapter, how he talks about that there would be four watches of the night. And those watches takes from the starting of in the 1900s, when the Azusa Street, when God moved in a mighty, miraculous way, it covers the same period of time, those four watches, as Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to verse 10. It covers the same scope of ground. What is it in Mark we're actually looking at? He's talking about watching for what? Because watching, if we're not careful, we can fall asleep. Churches has fell asleep. Matthew 25, verse 5, it says that the wise and the foolish virgins, they fell asleep. But God had to bring a cry to wake them up, to get them watching again. And as that cry came, lo and behold, it didn't go a little further on. The brand of move has settled in. They're falling asleep today. Not falling asleep in the sense of they don't know what some of the things that Brother Branham preached. But they're falling asleep to be in Earnest looking for watching the Lord's coming.
And as we're looking for the Lord's coming, really if we start digging into it, it's you're looking at a spirit, a child of God that's continually looking towards the Lord. What would you have today for me? I thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And watching does not entail just the principal doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we need to be ready in the inner man. But if we're not dressed with the revelation, if you don't know the hour you're living in, you will not be in that rapture. You go to the Pentecostal church. They believe they're living in the hour that the rapture is going to be unfolding. That they're in the hour, this hour, but they don't know how to watch. They fulfill the scripture. They have their house broken into because they've organized. They're not looking at what God has been doing for a long time. And I'd have to say they have gone to sleep on the watching for the Lord's coming. The watching of the Lord for the Lord's coming does not stop with a certain revelation that you've come established and I'm watching now. But God is continually adding on more information, more nuggets, more details of his coming and how soon we're getting to it. And if we're as close as the people in this message believe we are, and I believe we're getting close. That miracle war ain't that far down the road. When that unfolds, brothers and sisters, there's going to be something taking place in the bride as well. It's a signal that the bride, like Israel having her land, which is our, for us would be the scriptural grounds of the word of God, the temple in place to worship as they have their temple, the bride would have come to her completion as Israel would be complete in her land. If that is but two or three years in the rough up ahead, then there are scriptures that has not been touched to the extent that God has not opened up fully all that it contains. And when a servant starts to touch those area, you hear the call saying, well, who are you? Or we don't know, or whoever is going to reveal it. Is it going to remain unknown till after the rapture? I don't think so. I don't believe so. We are watching, looking for every clue, every little aspect how God will open up to get the picture clear of his coming. Maybe I'll we'll have to go to that other directory to get it. So we are somewhere near that miracle war. With the way things are going in the world, with the shaking in England, the shaking in America, and if God allows this man that's president now, Trump, to do some shaking, then that will set in motion getting Israel ready that God will have to come on the scene and be involved in that miraculous war. To do what? To finally clean the land. And establish them in their own place. He said he'd do better for them than in the beginning. But is Israel under pressure now? You want to bet your boots. Not, no, don't bet your boots, please. You're not supposed to bet as a Christian. Okay? Thought it lightened things up a bit. But nevertheless, the enemy's at their gates. They, the nations of the world are against her. 
Doesn't that sound like the bride this morning? Really? Oh, but I don't see that in the newspaper. No, you ain't going to see it there either. But if we have the Spirit that we're born with again, of the Spirit of God, that He's showing us things to come, God has shown a lot of things since 2005. Not major things, but nuggets that we can look at. Sevenfold light in this hour. How long is to recognize that half hour silence? Once it starts and once it's going to finish. Well, we're going to look at this this morning, not the starting point, because everyone in Brother Jackson's message knows beyond a shadow of a doubt when Jesus peels that last seal. And when he does that, he's no longer high priest now. How many of you know that? Let him that is filthy remain filthy. Let him that remain righteous remains righteous. No more added to the bride. No more added to the foolish virgins or the white robes. What God is looking at in a generality. Now God can have certain exceptions if he like. Like the thief on the cross. Like the souls under the altar. So let's not draw straws about this and that, my parents and my, my uncle and, and so forth. We're looking at God has given us the scripture so that we can look and not be discouraged and taken away and fall asleep. That's why it's in there that way. I feel good. You? Praise the Lord. So now as we are looking at a time frame, yes, when he peels that seal... And you'll find that in Revelation chapter 5. But when he does that, reads a little further, it's after he peels that seventh seal that now we see in Revelation chapter 5 verse 8. And if we want to turn there, I know I'm making you flip all over the place. Now, verse 5 of that chapter shows where Jesus, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has prevailed to open and to loose the seven seals. Loosing those seals did not happen all in one expression, in a sense, in one day in 1963. Yes, in 63, he opened six. But how merciful as God has been for you and I here at the end time that the seventh one will, has not been revealed. It's going to be revealed right close up the road here. But then when Jesus has revealed it, when he does open that seventh seal, it gives a description in verse 6 what's around the throne. But then when we drop down to verse 8, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, every one of them having harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. You say, Brother Fred, I touched that last when last time I was down here. Yes, but there's some more nugget that fell into place. While flying over to Manitoba, Resting in the plain. Yes, I mentioned how the 24 elders were holding the bowls of the prayers. But the Spirit says, what about the beasts? They're holding bowls of prayer too. Not just the 24 elders. Because when we read here in verse 8, it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts. Now what, who are those four beasts? Now I can go back up here. You'll find a description in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. They're cherubims. They're called living creatures. And they're also named as beasts. Why do they have different names? Lord, why didn't stop the confusion? You should have said cherubims all the way. It's because 
God relates to the conditions of what they need to work with over time. But the way they're described, they all had four heads. They all look in four different directions. They all had four wings, two to cover their feet, and two they touched tip to tip. So, well, you can get a smart addict and says, well, it, the beast is not a shareable. I'd have to say, get on your knees. Look what God has delivered through a, a prophet and an apostle. And it's easy to see that the beast, the living creature, and the cherubims is the same. Because when it describes them, it describes them the same way. All right? So here's these living creatures, or these beasts. They too are holding golden vials of orders of the prayers of the saints. Maybe I'll zoom it up a bit there. Who are the 24 elders? Who opened that up? There was a prophet and there was an apostle. Those 24 elders are the 12 apostles of the new and the 12 patriarchs of the old, which are the son of, I, of, of Jacob, the 12 sons. Well, what does that all have to do? Remember, it's symbolic. As they're holding the prayers, they're not offering them where they get the prayers to begin with. It's figuratively shown they're holding all the prayers for what period of time God was working in. Under the grace age, it is the 12 apostles that are the foundation of the faith. They are the beginning of it, so they have the rights to hold these bowls of prayers or vials. But in the Old Testament, the progenitor of, of the 12, 12 sons, which now becomes the nation of Israel, it is they represent the time of the law. So there's prayers in the 24 elders that accounts the grace age, and it accounts now the law. But where do these bees fit in? Where are they, what prayers are they holding up to? These beasts are the cherubims. When did God first introduce them in his word? Way back in Genesis. When Adam was in the garden. Now man have getting, given certain titles through certain periods of time. Before man ever sinned, they call that the age of innocence. But then when man sinned, now it's called the age of conscience. So from Adam's day till what the 24 and the 12 patriarchs, of the, which are the sons of Jacob, then you have from the conscience, it's the share one that's holding the prayers of Adam, Noah, Enoch, you say, well, Brother Fred, I read it, and, and they don't say they prayed. Well, I hope we're not that dense. It says, Enoch walked with God. And if you're walking with someone, I know there's people that like to talk to themselves. But Enoch was talking to God. That's a form of a prayer. A prayer is not like... They teach you the Catholic Church on the rosaries and you're on your knees and that's a prayer. 
A prayer means communing with God. Noah walked with God. How else would he know how to build an ark? And so they prayed in that hour. And since the prayers are being brought, now, being brought up towards, to God, they're, being, they're offered up and they all go up to, to the throne, but they're being held for a special occasion. That we find in Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. You're our, in our prayer down here, they go up to God. We offer it to Him in the sense that they've gone up. But as God has instituted it, telling Moses about what prayer the incense was used for. It was put on hot coals. Have you been through some heart trials? Have you been praying some? Of course. And it's when it's hotter that you pray the more, right? So these prayers are gone up to heaven. But then once a year, which represented the complete cycle, it was the high priest that took the incense and he went into the holies of holy and offered it to God. In Moses' writing, not in the holies of holies, but in the holy place where the altar, the brazen altar was there, the golden, al- the golden altar to offer incense, the instrument they were using was made of brass. God never told Moses, make it out of gold. You take Zechariah, as the angel Gabriel comes to him, he was the priest that was to minister that. He didn't go into the holies of holy. He offered up incense every day, because God wanted incense every day, and he wants you and I to pray every day. These are types. But now the holy, going into the holies of holy. It doesn't mention that the high priest in the Old Testament under Moses had a golden censer. It's only when we arrive to the Apostle Paul in chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, that Paul now says there's a golden censer. And where he's burning the incense, as we see as Paul accounts it in that ninth chapter, There's no veil before the high priest, as Paul gives the description in chapter 9, because that veil was rent and it's opened. So he can see the holies of holies. So from the apostle Paul, he shows that there's that golden censer, and we're talking now in terms of a high priest. Not your ordinary everyday priest. And so it now is as it is described that that high priest has that golden censer looking at the types of the Old Testament as prayers have gone up. It was made of brass. What does brass mean? Judgment. We've been judged. We pray to God. But we've been set free. But now, what that high priest represented once a year shows the finality of the year, but we're showing the finality of mankind from Adam's day till you and I pray the last prayer. This angel in Revelation chapter 3 is going to offer up all the prayers of the cherubims, of the twelve patriarchs of old, and the twelve patriarchs of the new, and he's in in heaven in before the holies of holy, which only a high priest can be there. So let's turn to Revelation chapter 8 now. 
I don't mean to be loud with you this morning. But I get excited when God opens up a little bit more nuggets into his word. So we know from 8, chapter 8, verse 1, we know that's the half hour silence. The seventh seal was opened and there was silence in heaven. I pray that the bride understands that that silence is not silence that you can't talk. The silence is no more revelation that's coming from the throne because Jesus is not sitting there. When he opened that seventh seal, he is no longer, will ever be high priest in the function he's been in during the grace age. So this is at the opening. I'll probably have to go down to the other place to... So since he's no longer a high priest, that silence is about no revelatory coming from the throne area, but it is coming through an angelic being that's on the earth. Revelation chapter 10. He cries with a loud voice. Why? So we don't fall asleep. And what we're looking at in verse 3, when you hear, well, nobody knows what that is or who that is, go your way. Because our perfection will happen and you will have still not know what that verse is about. Somewhere it has to be opened up. Unless there's another 20, 30 years to go down and God finally will have someone to open it up. So now it goes on to say, verse 2, And I saw seven trumpets that stood before God, and there was given seven trumpets. They were given the trumpets. But it has nothing to do with us Gentiles. They were prepared to sound for the Jews for the week of Daniel. That's where the trumpet's going to be. Now here's the focus. As John is looking at this scene, he says, I, And another angel came and stood before the altar. What altar and where? In heaven! Where Jesus is at? Was at? It's the angel that has the golden censer. Oh, but that's Jesus if we're talking about the it, right where the altar is. No, it ain't. In Hebrew chapter 2, verse 16, Jesus never took on the nature of angels. So get that out of your mind, claiming it's Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you this morning, thus saith the Lord, it is not. And having stood at the altar with a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. Why? It's all the prayers from Adam to to the end. That he should offer it with the prayers of A-L-L, all the saints, upon the golden altar which is before the throne. This is not your garden variety of angels. And I don't mean any disrespect about the angelic family. There's guardian angels. There's ministering angels. There are archangels. There are cherubims, seraphims. But there's an angel that God has used to display being a high priest. That's none other but Melchizedek. Well, you're pulling straws. Well, you show me what it is then if you have a better revelation. It 
It's Melchizedek there. God used him as a, yes, as king and priest, but as Paul describes Melchizedek, he says he's a high priest. He's a high priest of the Most High God. Abraham was a servant of the Most High God. So it is not God in theophany form. And I know sometimes it may upset some. But I'm not here to please some. I'm here to obey the Lord what he gives me to minister to you. Now, if Gabriel or Michael or the angel that God had when he was bringing them through the wilderness, he says, I'm sending you an angel, you obey to his voice. And if you don't, he will not pardon because God gave him the authority of the voice and to execute things as they were going towards the wilderness. If an angel can speak in terms for God, then cannot God use an angel as come in the form of Melchizedek and speak for God? Now we can see it with Gabriel. We can see it with Michael. We can see it with this and the other thing, but we can't see it with Melchizedek. There is no other... Now, when you're looking at Verse 3 of chapter 8. You are in heaven. That angel is doing this in heaven. The 24 elders are in heaven. The cherubims are in heaven. And God does not choose any ordinary angels to do this offering because this offering if we see the type in the Old Testament, it can only be done by a high priest. Well, y'all for quiet this morning. Can you see the picture? Yeah, but it doesn't say that, Brother Fred. It said it's an angel and he's standing there. Yeah, right. Go ahead and believe it's just an ordinary angel. You know, something just taking place. This is important. It sets the end of the silence in heaven. When are we going to pray the last prayer? At the wedding supper? No. We're going to say the last prayer while we're living here before we get changed. That angel cannot offer those prayers till we have prayed the last one and we're changing the twinkling of an eye and we'll meet the dead in Christ and we'll meet Jesus in the air. Oh my. The best is yet to come. Well, why do we need to know that? Why would Jesus... Take the trouble to speak to his disciples in Mark, Luke, and in Matthew. Watch. He says, watch and pray. And in Mark, he, a little, in chapter 14, he, he, you see an illustration of how Jesus, when he went up to pray before he went to Calvary, and he asked his disciples, to wait, watch. They weren't watching about basic salvation. They were had to watch what was about to transpire. And the watch we're looking at here in 2017 is not your basic salvational doctrines. Yes, we need them. And don't, don't somebody say, well, I'm, you're negative on that. If we haven't been living right, those Principal doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ is still applicable and even what Paul spoke about. But just knowing those things 
My, the cares, the Pentecostal have everything but the revelation of the Godhead. Would that make them a candidate for the rapture? Would that make a candidate that they're watching? No. The major first watch happened and six seals were opened. The bride now had more information than she had at Azusa Street. Yet, that defined the hour that we lived in, those six, seal, those six seals being opened up. But that give it, didn't give us all the information or the, the details that's required as, we, as the bride would move on from 1963 on down. How God used that wonderful apostle. Start showing things in heaven. How we see the eternal age, the millennium, what the trumpets were for, what the vials were for, and showing, bringing to the forefront, and Brother Brown had started as well, Ephesians chapter 4, there would be a fivefold ministry. Before she leaves here, there's two things that she's watching for the bride at this hour. She's watching for every nugget to show how clear the picture is, to know how close she's coming to the end. That's one thing. But at the same time, she's got to look at unity. And unity ain't going to happen by just a bunch of brothers trying to agree to work together. That is fine, and I admonish that. But it's going to be the Word of God that's going to actually do it. All through time. When God brings a certain vessel on the scene. Did Brother Branham have to go to a committee? No. In the days of Brother Jackson, was it a committee? It's what he preached. It's what God was bringing on ground that was bringing the bride a little closer to unity. And if it's the fivefold ministry to bring the bride to unity, then it's going to be the word that's going to do it. And when God brings a revelated word on ground, it'll have its effect of lining things up. It's going to cause the believer and the ministry sooner or later, to pay attention to what's going on. But if not, then it'll happen to every move. There's going to be some that's going to be falling asleep. Not asleep that they don't know anything. Don't you think the Brandon movement knows a lot of things concerning what was brought to that hour? Do you, th you think that would be enough? And just get your inner man ready that you'll be ready to go in the rapture. No. That's why Jesus said there would be more than one watch. Luke speaks about three. Mark speaks about four. Mark covers from the 1900s, from Azusa Street to the end. But Luke speaks about the time of Brother Branham to the end. They don't cancel one another, it's where you place them in, in position. Maybe there's somewhere, anyway, I want to deal with something else as well. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. And we touched on it a little bit last night. That how that Israel had the light of the moon. What does that mean? It didn't have direct light. It didn't have direct revelation. God used types and shadow 
to lead them. But when they arrive and they're being restored and their light is rising, they're starting to see some of the old, not just the Torah, but they're starting to see some of their minor prophets. God is bringing, giving them more light till they reach the week of Daniel and in the first part of that week of Daniel, now what they see in types, now they will see to a certain portion whatever God wants them to see, they'll see the true revelation and they'll know who their Messiah is. That's your 144,000. And the woman Israel. The light, of one, the light of the moon becomes the light of one day. But you and I, according to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26, it says the light of one day is going to be the light of seven days. That's not to your Jews. That's to you and I, us Gentiles. And that scripture was quoted probably by Brother Bradham. I know Brother Jackson only touched upon it. But it's after he left that we got to see what that sevenfold light is about. That one full light that the early church had that ran from Pentecost to 1963. Prior to 63, or in the, if you want to, the 40s and the 50s, the revelation that they had, that generation here at this end time had also at that period of time. So it's the light of one full day. But it's from 1963 onward. No, it's not in 63, there's seven fold of it. It's progressive. And we all can look here this morning and say, yes, God used that apostle in this hour, and then we've seen the light really increased. It was not because we're smarter, it's because it was God's grace giving us an understanding. He was now bringing, going to bring this bride to a close and giving her the revelation of his full plan of salvation. Because there's things that was brought from 63 on, in these last 40 years or so, that was needful that we didn't go into the trap of Satan going back in some denomination. What, makes, what difference does that make to know all that stuff? Uh, I love the Lord. I'm going to get cl- I want to get closer to the Lord. Hey, you can ask where there's... A, at least a little bit of fire in the Pentecostal church, they'll say that. You can look at the independents or the, those that are on TV. They, they're really into that. But nowheres do they know how close or what God's doing in this hour. And to be righteous before God. If we're sealed with the Spirit, you're sealed till the day of your redemption. Not until next week. And the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to you. You don't put it on. Like Revelation concerning the fine linen. No, God does not want us to... To dwell with, I know we all have problems, and our brother's talking about he, he used that thumb, and you're not the only one for the horn. Or it could be other things. But that blood of Christ is there for our unbelief. If the blood wasn't there, none of us would be saved. By pressing that, bro- that button, brother, may diminish the, some of the reward, but it doesn't take away your salvation. Not one iota. Thank God that we have that promise. Now, a true child of God, he hates to offend God. He goes to the throne. That's why Jesus is our high priest and our lawyer and our advocate. And glory to God that he is. 
But don't forget the same one that you're looking at. He's the head of the church. And he wants to lead you to the full plan of God. Otherwise, take that book of Revelation, close it, tear it out. We don't need it. It's, it's, if all we need is to walk with Jesus and have, be under the blood. A lot of people know a lot of things in the scriptures that's in the religious world. They're, yes, adamant, or, or if you want to, uh, how can I put it, really, uh, enth- not enthused, but really concerned about their life in the, in, the, in the manner how they walk with God. But they won't look for one second what God is doing and he requires in this hour. That's why he says, watch. He didn't say watch of the basic salvation. I mean, those principles of doctrine of Christ has been instituted from the, the first church age till now. Surely, in 2,000 years, somebody must have got it right. That's walking so close to God, he's ready for the rapture. It's not in that realm. That is necessary. Without it, and what we're looking at, you, will not, you and I will not be made ready. But I'm thankful that the Lord has really... If the hunger goes, the body goes weak, and it will finally get its ease and go to sleep. I'm thankful for what God has done in this hour. So as we look at that, the hour we're living in, there's going to be sevenfold light. When I look at Luke chapter 19 concerning those ten servants that was given pounds to occupy their inn, if that's all that those servants needed to do, then Jesus would not have written after, he says, and the wise servant was given one, ta- one pound, and he increased ten pounds, not increased from what was given, increased from that point of time. And the pound is in terms of revelation and understanding. So we are still moving towards that sevenfold light. Every nugget, every truth, in time, God is going to open up. There there's has to be a vessel that has to start speaking in those terms. Well, I've taken the joy out of your... Uh, now, to me, that feeds my soul. He said we were his friends. And that he would show his friends things that has coming up the road. You can have a naysayer say, yeah, but it's not you and we're not looking at those things there. And I have to say there's going to have to be a separation. Last year, when I looked at there's no preaching message, there's no place to hide. When God brings something on ground, there's only two avenues. Either you walk with it, or you walk against it. Even when you're silent and not acknowledging it, it shows what side you're on. It may be a, a person may be looking at certain at it and not fully knowing, yes, as we look at in different points of time as we're growing. But if it's a continual saying, I don't think so, then I have to say one of us is not going to make it. Right? When Jesus came to the Pharisees and he spoke to them his word, he says, if I had not come and spoken to you, I'll put my own words here, you would have no sins, no unbelief, because there was nothing to point the error. But because... I have spoken, you have no cloak for your sin of unbelief in the little toy doctrines that you're playing with. Or traditions. 
That's what the word does. When it comes on ground, well, maybe I'll save some for tonight. But praise God, I'm thankful for truth in this hour. I know when Brother Branham passed away and the movement was there, what are we going to do? The prophet's gone. How will we ever get to go ahead? Well, you might as well be saying, God, I think it's over. You can't do anything more. But he brought a man by, by an apostle. And how wonderful that was for, at least we had access God was using that vessel of clay for almost 40 years. But when God took him home, and he had to take him home because otherwise the fivefold ministry would not have been able to learn how to stand on their feet. He's looking for a backbone, not a wishbone. And I remember when, he, when I heard he passed away, I said in my heart too, what are we going to do now? Where are we going to go? God, can you bring out somebody on the scene tomorrow? No. But in time, God chooses the vessel whom he sees. He chooses. That's why that prophecy in 2001, and last year when our sister brought that prophecy and read it, she had it in her Bible, I don't believe it was an accident. God was again reaffirming, don't choose whom I have chosen to be see fit to be in the ministry. If you're playing with that, you're playing with fire. Because sooner or later, God's going to bring this to the surface. And that brings me to the parable about the servant that got beaten with few stripes and many stripes. No, they're not going through the tribulation. But what they've been holding and they find themselves wrong, it's like eating humble pie. It's like stripe on your back. Stripe to your, how's it put it? Your understanding. There's nothing worse than somebody saying, hey, you're wrong, and and you're actually wrong. You didn't have it right. And boys, that sort of humbles you. (laughs) Well, that's the stripes he's talking about. And we'll talk about that tonight, maybe. So the Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand at this time. I won't go any further than uh, this morning, but... We are nearing the end. The watch that he's, he's admonishing and, and, and admonishing to watch and pray... If somebody's praying, that means they want to know something. They're seeking God. So that we don't fall asleep. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, for all the things you've done for us in this hour. And I know, Lord, you're watching over this little bride worldwide as, Lord, as you are now causing situations on the earth to be shaken so that, Lord, you're putting pressure for this bride to come into unity upon your word, Lord. Lord, it's not of our intelligence or for anything like that, Lord, except you come on the scene, Lord, and you open up the picture. Then all we can do is just speak words. But I thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the things that you have opened up to us. I ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So praise the Lord. You can be seated.
this one. It says G here. I have heard how Christians long ago they were brought before a tyrant's throne. They were told that he would spare their lives if they would the name of Christ and one by one they chose to die the son of God they would not deny like a great angelic choir sing I can almost hear the voices ring I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength, with all that I am, I will seek to honor His command as I pledge allegiance to the land. Now the years have come. Years have gone, but the cause of Jesus still goes on. Now our time has come to count the cost, to reject this world, to embrace the cross. One by one, let us live our lives for the one who to give us life till the trumpet sounds on the final day let us proudly stand and boldly say I pledge allegiance to with all my strength and all that I am seek to honor his command as I pledge allegiance to the land I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all that I am I will seek to honor as I pledge allegiance to the land. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my path. I should have fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. 
I should have fallen my soul cast down but mercy rewrote my life mercy Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy. that mercy did rewrite my life and God knows where we'd be without him today I'm uh, just so thankful for this assembly and we have a place to gather and and for the truth that we have in this hour it's a spiritual darkness out there it's and uh I'm just thankful to be part of this assembly and uh, thankful for the ministry. And with that, I'll turn it over to Fred. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your mercy and your grace. Father, we're thankful that uh, you've gathered us here this day. We pray, Lord, that you remember the ones that are in need, the ones that are suffering, Father in silence, Lord, and the ones that we know not about, Father. You are well aware of what has taken place in the hearts and the minds, the battles. The battle was already won, Lord, and we look to you. Father, we pray your traveling mercies upon each one. We give you thanks in Jesus Christ's name. We pray, Father. Amen.